the Sabras channel and this video is going to relate to the um, ventilation or the uh, the vent directional knob right here on the a Saab 9.3 with the manual um, climate control knobs. So if you ever notice that as in this car's case the um, the vents are stuck on a, a particular direction um, and the knob turns very easily without actually changing any of the directions <clears throat> you may have a broken shaft behind the knob itself so to take this thing apart is really simple first we're just going to remove each of the knobs for the vent direction and the temperature control they just pop right off uh, this little knob tends to come out when you remove this whole face which just very carefully oops see look there it goes already popped out and very carefully just kind of pull up on the entire face panel the bottom ones are going to be the trickiest ones but there is one tab I'm sorry it's held them by six tabs three on each side And to remove this kick panel, it's easiest to just remove the whole glove box. Now, I've already done this, and I'll show you how to put it back in when it comes time. So with the glove box out of the way, um, it allows this little edge to kind of uh, be free. Otherwise, it's trapped on, uh, behind the glove box. And you'll have a Torx nut down here. Here he is, that you just remove. It's a little tiny guy. And this whole kick panel can just push forward then out and voila there is our broken control knob so next what we're going to do is we're going to remove this entire plastic bin which is best done by pushing uh, from the back uh, to do this easily grab a flathead screwdriver as you're going to want to depress these little I'm trying to get the camera to focus on it uh, these little tabs that are locking this piece in there you can also try and come in from the front. I got the bottom one undone. Uh, come in from the front to kind of help you out a little bit. Okay, now that the uh, white bin is popped out and pushed forward. The broken end of the uh, control shaft. I just pulled off the back of the switch and I think I can just get that control shaft out and sneak the new one back in. Jeez, yeah, there's nothing holding that in there. Uh, ah, there we go. Side note, it looks like this thing is pre-wired for a automatic climate unit. Hmm, I'll have to explore that in the future. And Let's take our new one. This is why they call it the toilet paper roll holder, is because it is spring-loaded, <laughs> just like you would use in your restroom. Um, and it's going to be very, very hard. You'll probably see before I do. I'm going to sneak the camera in there. And let's see if you can see. There's the um, opening that the opposite end of this control shaft will go into. So here's what the new piece looks like. <clears throat> um, this is the end that will go onto the knob and the opposite end will go into the um, directional box. So I'm going to take a stab at this. I unplug the uh, the connectors. There's still this big one on the back, which you can choose to unplug. Uh, the cable you can pretty much leave alone, because um, all you really need is just enough space to get back there and see um, the hole for our control shaft and, and line it up appropriately into that, and then turn the knob so that it fits over the position it's supposed to be in. Okay, 
once it's in, it's spring loaded, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and just push down on it and make sure it's uh, fully in there. So, I got both the, the plugs that I unplugged, um, the one for the um, three switches here on the bottom, and this other guy for these illuminating bulbs, got them both plugged back in. So, with our control, new control shaft in place, I'm just gonna kind of fit this and take a look at what direction this guy is. And let's see. Maybe go one more. There, that looks about perpendicular. Okay, once you got her all buttoned up, let's go ahead and gingerly test this before we put our kick panel back on. And we're also going to talk about why this is a pretty poor design. You see this is really flimsy right here, um, which is why you need to be careful when you're operating this directional knob. Um, and you know, have any passengers that aren't aware of this, this is why you tell them to not just go ahead and slam the knob to the left or to the right. This connection is pretty weak. Um, the other reason why this thing breaks is, you know, this, these drums, as they get old, they, they tend to kind of, um, the, the drum itself sticks to the outer wall of the, the casing and it makes it pretty, pretty tough to spin. Um, so sometimes you can pull this off and spray some lubricant in there. Or, uh, I've also seen some ideas where people try to, uh, separate the, uh, the outer wall of the, uh, drum casing just a little bit so it doesn't stick but um, something to be very aware of and, and it's important to note because if you keep breaking these shafts, these control shafts, then you may want to take a look at uh, what's going on inside the drum behind it. <laughs> it is working as it should and it actually spins pretty freely so I'm not really um, you know, I just gotta be gentle with it, but I'm not really too worried about this drum being bound up too much. Ah, there we go. It's been stuck on floor for the half of uh, first half of winter, so it'll be nice to finally have some face heat. But that is uh, the video. Thank you guys for watching. And for those of you that wanna see the glove box uh, reinstallation, I will do that real quick.